Alexander de Moss, Professor of New Testament and Early Christianity at the University of Notre Dame. Today, Christians from all denominations remain deeply invested in the myth that for the first three centuries of its existence, the early church was the victim of relentless persecution. But contrary to traditional church teaching and popular belief, Christians were not systematically tortured and killed by the Romans merely because they refused to deny Christ. Rather, these stories were exaggerated, revised and forged, often centuries later. So Pliny, his exchange with uh, Trajan, uh, the persecution under Nero, the great persecution under Diocletian, these didn't happen. Uh, Perpetua, Felicity, um, Ignatius of Antioch, Polycarp of Smyrna, but and the history of the church was reshaped in order to combat heresy, to inspire and educate the faithful, and to fund churches. No, I mean, we had the Circusilium who, when they legalized Christianity, they actually attacked Roman soldiers with um, basically cardboard swords, so they would be killed. That's how deeply ingrained martyrdom was in the early church. And you had groups like the Tridor. I mean, where did the <clears throat> where did the Novations and the Donatists come from? Where did the Lapsi and the Tridori come from? The people who wouldn't give up their life uh, for the gospel and then tried to return, because um, that's how the Novations came about. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense in history, but, you know, this British lady. In to getting the history right, the goal of my book is to expose the dangerous legacy that the... and to fund churches. The dangerous in legacy? To getting the history right, the goal of my book is to expose the dangerous legacy that these misunderstandings about Christian martyrdom have had for us today. The rhetoric of martyrdom and persecution persists, especially in the language of the religious and political right. And just as oh. early Christians employed the martyrdom myth to exclude heretics, That's a myth. the very same myth is still used to silence dissent and galvanize a new generation of cultural warriors. We can see this in statements by Christian leaders, speeches by politicians, and the rhetoric of media pundits who claim that they are being persecuted in the way that Christians have always been persecuted. The idea that Christians are, by their very nature, persecuted is grounded in an inaccurate history of the early church. Christians were not relentlessly persecuted in the first few centuries. And they're not systematically and continually persecuted today. What was that? Hold on. Christians were not relentlessly persecuted in the first few centuries. And they're not systematically and continually persecuted today. Well, you heard it from her. Um, you know, because, uh, you know... Being uh, Syriac Orthodox, Antiochian Orthodox, you know, our brethren who are Maronite, Melkite, there wasn't a genocide and an ethnic cleansing in Syria of the Antiochian, and the Syriac, and the Melkite, and the Maronite. Um, and uh, our Slavic brethren to the north uh, weren't horribly persecuted under Lenin and Stalin in the communist USSR. And my Coptic brother and the Coptic Orthodox of Egypt weren't mercilessly um, persecuted and ethnically cleansed. I mean, as we speak, the Christians in Syria and the sects of Christianity in Syria that predate Islam are absolutely systematically being persecuted and murdered and tortured because they're Christian. 
um, the Assyrian Church of the East has been reduced by 90% in Iraq. Um, Egypt, as we speak, they are being persecuted. And they were ethnically cleansed and, and genocided. But, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, white Anglo-Saxon blonde academic lady, you're either so ignorantly stupid, but you're from, what, Harvard or you're some top college. So you're lying. You're actually lying. This is a case of this Candida moss, and I thought Candida was a fungus. You're li She's lying. She has to be. She, she doesn't know about the Coptic Orthodox, the Antiochian Orthodox, the Syriac Orthodox, the Ethiopic Church, the, um, what happened to the Eastern Orthodox in, under the communist regimes. Uh, what happened to the Catholic Church in El Salvador by the CIA? Uh, the Cristeros, what happened to the Cristeros in the 1920s? What happened under Islam, to go even farther back? I mean, that's bullshit. The 20th century alone, from the... From, the, from Lenin and Trotsky and Stalin to... Um, the Cristeros and La Cristada to what's happening just the last 10 years of the Copts in Egypt, the Syriac, Antiochian, Melkite, and Maronite in Syria and Lebanon and Iraq, as well as the Assyrian Church of the East. I mean, it, it's, it's gut-wrenching what a horrible lie this is. And She's in college and she's teaching this and people are going to take this as fact. This is a dangerous, hateful, bigoted lie. Well, they're not real Christians because, you know, they have dark skin. Maybe that's maybe that's her, 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 her thought that only true Christians have blonde hair and blue eyes because she claims to be a Christian. She claims to be a Catholic. So I guess the Syrians and the Coptics and the Ethiopic and the Slavs, they're not, they don't count. What a bigoted, bigoted, evil bitch who's lying. It's a lie. It's a provable lie. 